Hi there, this is Janet Simmons and welcome to the second video in AEDT 3120 Workplace Learning. In this video, we will be looking at the history and trends of workplace learning. There are four main sections to this video. We will review the analysis questions to help guide your thinking while watching the video. Then we will briefly look at the history of workplace learning. Next, we'll compare traditional workplace learning with digital and network learning. And finally, we'll look at some trends in workplace learning. For the analysis questions, I'd like you to think about the differences between workplace learning and formal or traditional learning. I'd also like you to think about some examples of workplace learning that take place in your sector or industry. Do you think they address the requirements of the organization and of the learners? The third point I'd like you to think about is how workplace learning is evolving with technology. Have you noticed if these changes are positive or negative? And if you think about it even further, the changes may be positive for an organization, but negative for the learners, or vice versa. You may wish to pause the video now and jot down these questions so you can refer to them as you watch the video. Okay, let's get started with the history and trends of workplace learning. Harold Jarkey, who is a workplace learning writer, you should become familiar with, says that since the late 20th century, only training professionals were allowed to talk about learning. Jarkey says that training departments have been directed to control organizational learning. This has also happened in formal education, both in K-12 and in post-secondary education. This model compartmentalizes learning where only training professionals were allowed to teach and develop learning materials. This model sees the learner as passive in that they are taught to instead of being engaged and active in the learning process. For example, workers may be asked to attend to presentations where they may take notes and ask questions. This could be a PowerPoint presentation or it could be a demonstration to learn how to use a new tool. Nonetheless, this is passive learning as opposed to sharing information and then reinforcing the learning through simulations or problem-based learning, which is active learning. Perspectives of workplace learning have evolved in the last 100 years. In 1911, Frederick Taylor introduced the principles of scientific management, which centers around the themes of duties, standards, and enforcement. Taylor's principles are based on ensuring standardization of production, which includes both products and people. He believed in a rigid hierarchy and a social class system. Therefore, he believed workers should be trained in a rigid system that did not allow for individualization, which would slow down the learning process. He also believed in the adoption of standards, which should be led by management, and all workers were expected to meet these standards. This is the opposite of what Jarkey and other workplace learning experts believe. Our current model is based on transparency in our work and that knowledge rests with everyone, not just management, the training department, or human resources. Learning is something that everyone is responsible for. The hierarchy remains present, but not as rigid or formal. Standardization of production is found in many organizations and works in conjunction with individuality and creativity. Traditional workplace learning meant time away from your job, often attending a seminar in a hotel conference room. But this is a very traditional study of memorization approach with face-to-face -face delivery that requires learners to quickly understand material based on lecture style. Additionally, this approach restricts access to trainers and learners are not encouraged to learn from peers in the learning group. This approach is very formal and is driven by management. In digital and network times, some of these barriers are being challenged, stretched, or changed. Now a worker does not need to leave the workplace and completes learning sections in chunks. Digital access allows for workers to learn on their own time, such as a subway, a bus, or a streetcar on their way to work. There are a variety of ways to achieve content delivery, and it is often a blend of formal and informal learning. Learners in the workplace are now identifying their own learning needs and seeking out content, as opposed to being told what they need to learn, how, and when. We can easily compare the traditional model with digital and networked workplace learning that often takes place today. Your workplace may still use some aspects of traditional workplace learning 
and blend them with digital and network aspects. It is clear that we're moving quickly towards learners who increasingly demand the independence of personal learning and the flexibility that goes along with it. I've alluded to current trends several times in this video, so let's take a closer look at what some training professionals have to say. According to Hart, there are different shifts towards team collaboration and worker engagement. The increasing use of digital technologies is a challenge for many organizations as they try to maintain engagement and develop personal content for their workforce. Some organizations are taking up the challenge to use workplace learning as a means to attract top talent. They may do this by using gamification and other non-traditional training methods. Overall, these organizations see training and workplace learning as a means to achieve their overall organizational goals. We've covered the basic background to workplace learning in this video. Don't forget to view all the videos and reading in this module so you have a clear understanding of the challenges and changes in workplace learning. Please come to the tutorial prepared to talk about some workplace learning trends you are seeing in your workplace. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.